Here is Bodhi Linux version 3. Now it's based on Ubuntu 1404 long term support and it uses the Enlightenment desktop. So it's actually really fancy and lightweight and you can do quite a lot with it. But it only comes with the barest essentials pre installed. All you get is a file manager, a terminal, and a Midori web browser. That's it. Make your own system. So it caters more intermediate to advanced users. So prepare to get your hands dirty with this distro and building the system up from almost scratch. Now the older version of Bodhi Linux, version 2, was proper drop dead gorgeous. <laughs> it was a really nice system. It had a variety of themes and it gave you a variety of customizations that you could choose on like type of desktop you wanted, whether you wanted like laptop, tablet, traditional desktop, or nothing much at all. But this one, all that has gone. Nothing, it's basic. And that started me thinking, okay, what else have they removed? And when you look at the themes, uh, yeah, all the themes have gone as well. There's only three different themes to choose from. And I don't think any of them are particularly good in this case. So the worst issue with this operating system is that it's not as good as its predecessor. One thing it does have going for it, though, is that it's now compatible with UEFI Secure Boot BIOSes because Bodhi Linux version 2 was based on Ubuntu 12.04, which was not compatible with UEFI Secure Boot BIOSes. So the layout of the desktop is really whatever you want to make it. So around the edge you can put these shelves and you can fill them with like the application launcher, the current open applications, like network control here, and time calendar, and I've got a shutdown button. So I've got two different shelves, one on the left hand side, one at the top, and the behavior is different for them because the one at the top automatically hides. Now for the launchers, you've got this run everything launcher, or you have a traditional start menu type design. Now with the run everything launcher, it's kind of similar to like GNOME Do or the Synaptics launcher. Not quite as feature rich as the Unity or Home Run launchers, but you could like type in the name of an application and it will find it and you can open it. So I've done all that through the keyboard, so typing in and then press enter. It doesn't do anything though if you type in a calculation here, so if I type 4 times 2, it doesn't give me the answer. If you do it in Unity or Home Run Launcher, it'll give you the answer. But those desktops are quite a bit more bulky than the Enlightenment desktop. So I mean, other things you can do here, so you can scroll through the menus. So I mean, looking here, we've got uh, Office. Open up LibreOffice here. Go back. Scroll through all the applications. The currently open applications or look at some of the settings. So there is quite a bit you can do from there. We can open up files. Now it didn't work properly though if I try and open up this SVG file because for some reason it's got Synaptic Package Manager as the application for opening SVG files. Can't work out how to change that. If I open up File Manager, go across here, yeah, we've got the file preview. Properties, so how do I change the application type? don't know. It's very weird. But if I open up Inkscape, oh, sorry, this is a difficulty of behaviour. Right, double clicking the title bar does not maximise the application. You have to click maximise. Some applications do suffer glitches like here in Inkscape on the ruler. That's not working properly. For the most part, applications do seem to behave okay. Oh, I know why that's not working properly, so I was having a mess around earlier with a uh, shelf. So let's go into the customization of that. Shelves. Right, so that is the shelf I have. So if I delete it, and now open up Firefox again, you can see it goes all the way across. That was something I was playing around with. So if I add a new one, yep, shelf two. And you can see some of the things we can put in here. So, iBar is the contents of the currently open applications. So, add, sound control, pager is the desktop switcher. If you right click on the shelf, you can move the contents around. Then you can do even more with the shelf as well. So, let's have a look. 
settings, shelves. What is it not working for? Stop moving gadgets. Let's try it now. Settings, right. So I can change the position. I can change the size of it. So stop shrinking to content and width. Change the width. The style, make it invisible. I'm not sure what the difference is between alternate and default. And you can change whether it whether it's above or below the applications. Quite a bit you can do with the shelves. And one weird glitch I did find is in setting the shelf contents. So if I remove it, it removes the whole shelf and of course it's not doing it this time. So let's go and delete the shelf. So in terms of the theming, you go into settings and then theme. There's only three additional ones available and I haven't actually installed one of them. But you get this light theme. Seems a bit too bright to me, that one does. Perhaps I'm more used to the dark themes. Back to this default theme. You can see it's changed some of the colours here. Hmm. Look bad. It comes with quite a few wallpapers on the system. So what, let's use the run everything launcher to find the wallpapers. Pick up. So yeah, quite a few here. Um, Let's try and apply that one. There we go. If you open up Midori, you do get this quick start guide. So it helps you through like installing software. So at the end here, it gives you a link to install Synaptic Package Manager. Covers a bit about the features on the system. It does help you with getting started. Enlightenment really is not your average desktop, there's quite a bit you can do with it, despite the fact it is fairly minimal. But if you go on to Bodhi's website, I mean it uses DuckDuckGo for the searcher. If you go into the App Center, you can click into various different categories and actually install applications from here. Well, let's go for Mirage. With image viewers, Mirage, and install it. So just pop in your password. So is it there now? Let's try it. Mirage. Yes. So here's what I thought of at Bodhi Linux at version 3. So it is quite a lightweight and fancy desktop system. When you compare it to a desktop that's got similar memory usage, of the likes of LXDE and XFCE, this is quite a bit different. And it is quite a flexible desktop layout, almost along the lines of the flexibility of KDE. But it is very sparse on themes compared to the previous release, so it's quite a disappointment there for me, that was. And I did find some glitches with the Enlightenment desktop, although I couldn't demo those in the video because it somehow decided to hate me in the video. <laughs> there you are, <laughs> that's what it is. Nothing too major though. So it is really more of an operating system for the intermediate or advanced Linux user. So overall I've given it 70%. So thanks for watching, I'll see you all later.